Uh, today we are going over the lead code problem count numbers with unique digits, including whiteboarding approaches and solutions. Count numbers with unique digits is a dynamic programming problem that requires some knowledge of combinatorics, specifically the multiplication principle. So hopefully you've attempted a solution to the problem. If not, no worries, I'm going to solve it today. So the description reads, given an integer n, return the count of all numbers with unique digits x, where x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 10 to the n. So an important caveat is that we are counting numbers with unique digits up to the specified constraint. So in other words, if we were given n equals 7, we will be counting unique digits up to but not including 8 digits. So for example, when n equals 7, 10 to the 7th is equal to this, which contains eight digits. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. However, uh, since the constraint is specified as then we only count up to this quantity. So a solution to this problem is possible with nested for loops. Uh, however, it is also possible with a single for loop and hence we can achieve a big O of N worst case asymptotic complexity. So we are given the following constraints. Like previously mentioned, the n corresponds with the maximum amount of digits that will appear in a number within that range. Another important caveat is that the numbers to be counted can contain only one occurrence of a digit from 0 to 9, no repetitions. So it's tempting to iterate through each number and take the modulus result and hash it, but this will result in a time limit exceeded and even for practical purposes it takes too long to execute, so I won't be doing that today. So consider the set of decimal digits. There are 10 digits total to choose from the set. Since the question is asking for the amount of numbers with unique digits, in other words, integers of certain length that contain exactly one digit from the set of decimal digits. This also includes integers with a single digit, two digits, three dig digits, and so on. We must also include the amount of integers with a lower magnitude in the final result. So for example, if we were given n is equal to 5, we count all integers of length 5 with unique digits, and then we also count all integers with length of 4 with unique digits, n equals 3, n equals 2, n equals 1, and n equals 0. So consider a number or an integer length of 4 when we have n is equal to 4. 2, 3, 4. In order to calculate the amount of unique digits, we, all, we take note of the cardinality of the set, which is the amount of digits we can choose from, and select one digit from that set. So starting from left to right, we also have to consider that integers do not start with zero. So initially we have nine digits to choose from in that set instead of 10. So we choose the first digit, where k sub i is the digit. Afterward, we choose the next digit, but this time we can choose zero, so the number of choices in the set will be nine. Third, we choose the third digit, since we pick two digits from the set and there are no repetitions allowed, then we have eight digits to choose from. Lastly, we choose the final digit. Since we pick three digits from the set, we have seven digits to choose from. 
What happens each time we choose a digit is that we multiply the current amount of choices with the previous amount. So the final result will yield the amount of numbers with n unique digits. It's important to know that we do this for each length of digits up to the specified n. So before I begin the approach, I'm going to illustrate how the calculations look like for n length integers. So observe that as the length of integers increases, only one additional factor is multiplied with the previous result. So we can use this to our advantage. To begin, we consider the base cases when n equals zero and n equals one. When n equals zero, there's only one integer with unique digits and that's just zero. So our count is going to be equal to 1. When n equals 1, there are 10 integers with unique digits, uh, which is uh, 0, 1. It is very important to note that we do not want to double count. Whenever we get anything above, let's one, then we are simply going to say that it's 10. So since our table will be slightly off if we include these cases, then we simply check and return this expression at the beginning of the solution. So this will cover the case that n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1. Next, we define our table. Since the calculation is relatively simple, we need only a single array of size n. We then initialize the first value to 10, since we're not going to start counting at 0 and 1. Next, we want to keep track of the current product and minimum factor, so we declare two locals.
Since we initialize the first column of the table to 10, there's no need to begin at zero, so we iterate beginning at one all the way to n. So inside the loop, we will update the latest index with the current product summed with the previous result. So we calculate the current product with a minimum factor and decrement the factor. Next, we update the current entry of the table. Now, it's important to note that we have to sum the previous result uh, because that is the amount of digits of length n. Finally, since the result has propagated from the beginning of the table to the end, we simply return the last element. So now I'm gonna go ahead and implement this in code. There, so you can see it. Okay, so now I will test and then submit. There's a pass and then there we go. Accepted. So can we do better? Uh, yes, uh, we can actually completely get rid of the table and simply keep a local that holds the current amount. And we have to make sure that when we do this, we initialize this to 10 because we're actually starting from
integers that have a length of two digits. Uh, we can go ahead and get rid of this for loop. So you may have noticed we can also use a while loop instead of a for loop to avoid creating any more variables than necessary. I know that I ended up creating a local here, but we did get rid of the array and we don't have to declare another counter uh, to make sure that we iterate through the loop. So finally, we just simply return count at the end after this is done calculating. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and submit this or test and submit. There we go, pass the test. And there we go. There's our accepted submission. So one important takeaway from this solution is that we have saved time by storing the previous calculation since each integer length followed the same pattern. This is certainly better than a brute force solution. Anyway, uh, I hope this video helped and have a good one.